Hi guys, welcome to the Daughter Arise channel. My name is Yvonne and this channel is all about bringing you content about childhood sexual abuse. On this channel, I share things to do with my experience of going through this childhood trauma, things that I found difficult, things that I found helpful, things that I learned along my journey. Also on this channel, I share with you news stories and add my thoughts and commentary to them or anything I come across in the media to do with childhood sexual abuse. And also from time to time, I interview survivors and their supporters in hopes of raising awareness about this childhood trauma. So if this is the type of content you're looking for, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be notified of any new uploads. And if you do like the content, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about anger. It is one of the things when I look back on my experience of going through childhood sexual abuse that I can identify as something that was a major problem for me. Um, the number one problem I had actually was depression and the issues around that. But then also as well, I had a problem with anger. And the reason I had a problem with anger and where I can identify where it, where it started from, shortly after I was taken into care at 13 years old, going through the experience of having no justice for what had happened to me and being ostracized from my family, it built up in me this anger. And how I used to deal with that anger is that I would act out. When I was in kids' homes and different places like that, I would smash furniture, I would um, slam doors, I would shout at staff, I would do all these different things. Also as well, I would get into fights with sometimes other, um, other young people. At the time, I was struggling to articulate the pain that I felt inside, but I felt rage, I felt anger. And when I used to get angry, I used to almost shake because I had so much rage inside. Now I'm not, you know, happy, or proud to say that that is how I deal, dealt with a lot of my anger as a teenager, hitting people and hitting staff and stuff. You know, I'm in no way saying it as something I'm proud of. As a matter of fact, if I could see those members of staff today, I would say that I'm sorry because that is not what I, what I meant to do. But at the time, I was just so angry and I, I didn't know myself and, you know, I was just so upset about everything that happened to me. Another way I used to take out my anger, it was where I would self-harm. Um, I started to do this shortly after I entered into the care system. A lot of the other young people in some of the homes that I was in were self-harming and I started to pick up that habit and it was, you know, definitely not a good habit to do. But at the time when I was doing that, and it's something I talk about in my autobiography, Daughter Arise, is that when I started to do that, seeing, you know, that kind of cut and seeing that release of, you know, blood, basically it made me feel calm, which was really, really weird. Almost like it was kind of a reminder that I felt alive that I was actually here because I was in so much pain and I felt so angry. Again, this is not something that I would promote for anybody to do. It's certainly not something that you should be doing. Um, it's, certainly, it's certainly something that I shouldn't have been doing. But at the time, I picked up a lot of different toxic and negative behaviours that helped me to cope with the anger, sadness and depression that I was feeling. You know, one of the turning points for me, I think, where I started to, you know, deal with my anger in a different way, well, first of all, with the physical side of anger, when I was 16, I ended up pregnant and I became more aware and conscious of my decisions or the choices that I was making, the different things I was doing. And I wanted to, almost immediately actually, when I was pregnant with my first daughter, I just wanted to protect and love my daughter. So I didn't hit staff, I didn't get myself into situations that would cause me to get restrained. One of the things that helped me to understand my anger was when I went to therapy and really sat down in therapy for the first time at 22 years old and you've probably heard me mention this on so many other videos about 22 being the turning point for me to start to deal with a lot of the things that I was doing um, and to face my childhood trauma and having those sessions with my psychotherapy helped me to understand that I was taking out my anger on the wrong person the person I needed to take my anger out on was my dad now obviously it wasn't a, a physical situation where I could go and hit my dad or anything like that. Not that I would, I would do that. But some of the things that she told me that I could do was like write letters to myself, write letters to my dad, my mum and stuff. Not that I ever posted them. But I found those exercises to be something that really, really helped me to express how I was feeling. Because that was the thing that I was really struggling with. The anger was just 
rage and I was struggling to get it out and another thing that really was a major turning point for me was really realizing actually that I mattered and that what happened to me I had a right to be angry I had a right to cry I had a right to feel this rage that for me was really really eye-opening because I think for a long time from my childhood because of what I had gone through I thought that I had no rights to nothing because my dad violated my body, um, I was violating my boundary, boundaries were overrode all the time by him and stuff like that. My voice wasn't heard within my family, so I, I felt that I didn't matter. And I took all of that with me into my teenage years and into my, own, in, into my adult life, feeling that I had no right to anything, not even a right to be angry about what happened to me. And in therapy, being able to say, I have a right to be angry about what happened to me. I have a right to grieve about what had happened to me and for all the different things that sexual abuse brought into my life helped me to start to feel a bit of value about myself for the first time in my life. And it was something that over a course of years I had to deal with. It wasn't just like a block of therapy helped everything. You know, I had to do different things as well. Um, I became a born again Christian at 21. So when I gave my life to Christ, I had to start to learn how to forgive. And forgiveness, as I've talked about in other videos, is something that you continuously do. It's not a feeling. You don't feel like doing it. I certainly didn't feel like doing it. I had a lot of anger and rage towards my dad for about nine years. It's something I didn't feel like doing, but I knew I had to do it. I had to let go of the offense and allow God to deal with that, you know, and to heal me and do the work that he needed to do within me. So for me, that was something that really did help with, with the anger. And as another thing that did help with anger was forgiving my mum and dad for what they did to me. Now, I don't have a relationship with them. I haven't had a relationship with them for decades. But the act of saying I forgive them and letting go of the offence allowed me to let go of the anger and the and the and the pain that I felt towards them. Now do I still feel anger at the injustice? Yes, I do feel a bit of anger at the injustice, but it's a different type of anger. It's a righteous anger. It's not a destructive anger like when I was in my teens and in my adult years where I was very destructive with my anger. I've learned it's okay to be angry about things, but it's about what what I do with that anger that matters. And how I deal with the anger of my injustice now is that I help others by using my voice, by sharing my experience, by speaking up about the effects of childhood sexual abuse. Through my organisation Daughter Arise, which is nearly 12 years old, I have been using my voice, using all the things you know, skills, talents, experiences, everything, you know, to speak up about injustice. And that has helped me to channel my anger in a healthy, positive and beneficial way, not just for myself, but for others. So I just want to say to you that it's okay to be angry. Even if other people minimalize your anger and don't see it as a big deal, the fact that you've gone through childhood sexual abuse, maybe they don't believe you, maybe they don't believe it should you should be in pain this long none of that matters what matters is the effect that it's had on you and if even if other people minimalize it you don't have to minimalize the fact that you feel these feelings about what's happened to you it is okay to be angry what i would say to you is that not to internalize that anger against yourself that is not okay i would encourage you to find positive ways to be able to deal with your anger. One of the things as well that really helped me physically, what I did besides therapy, was exercise. I used to love boxing, which gave me a positive physical avenue to be able to do something to get out all that frustration. So rather than internalizing your anger, I would encourage you to try and do something where you can let out your frustrations. I think one of the major things that you can do to help you if you are feeling really angry still about the things that have happened to you, which is totally okay, as I said, to feel angry about it, is to get support to help you to maybe understand your anger. Or if you're not even ready to do that, I have a fantastic book called Choose Life. You can see it in the background, the white book, which helps 
survivors of childhood sexual abuse to start to do some of that work to help them to find their voice to look at things that have affected them to do with their you know sexual abuse because I know for a lot of survivors they're not ready to to seek help from anybody the ones that I know and just from just my interactions with survivors are still at a point where they feel a lot of guilt sh guilt and shame about the things that have happened to them which is not their fault so this book here will give you that space to be able to explore your feelings to write what you need to write to say what you want to say without anybody telling you that you shouldn't be feeling like this or you shouldn't feel angry or you should be over it or all this type of stuff and i will leave links to both of my books in the description box below i recently did a workshop called find your voice and i am going to be putting it online an online an online course to help survivors of childhood sexual abuse to find their voice i will let you know more when i launch it but finding your voice and finding positive ways to express hard and difficult feelings is going to help you to be able to kind of get that anger out in a safe way i am a creative person so writing letters writing poems writing my books have all been great ways for me to deal with my anger to deal with things that i didn't make couldn't make sense of helped me to kind of get that all out and helped me to be reflective about my experiences as well. I want you to know that wherever you find yourself right now in your journey of, you know, coming through the other side of childhood sexual abuse and the aftermath, it is okay. Don't let anybody make you feel that you should be doing this or doing that. It's totally going to be at a pace that you can deal with and you can understand. But the key thing I want you, I want you to know is that it's okay to be angry as long as you're not taking it out on yourself and on others. Please do try one of the little suggestions that I have shared in this video and I will see you on the next one. Take care.